The expansion of wealth and knowledge throughout the Victorian era spurred exploration and creativity, leading to breakthroughs in communication, transportation, and medicine. The discoveries and technology of the Victorian era fundamentally changed our way of life. Charles Darwin, Louis Pasteur, Jules Verne, and many other highly intelligent people lived during this time. The first train station in the city was London Euston. It connected Birmingham and London. Wales and England were served by the trains as well. The railway served as the main means of transportation for both people and commodities during the Victorian era. It helped the Industrial Revolution as well. In 1816, Nice Niepce captured the first image, albeit with some difficulty. He used a small, handmade camera for this. It was a good beginning, but it had to be perfect. Niepce continued his photographic experiments after his death in 1833, at which point his partner Louis Daguerre took over. Eventually, Daguerre created the daguerreotype, the first practical photographic technique and camera. This was created in 1838 and presented to the public for the first time in 1839. He built them out of copper sheets that had been coated with silver and rendered light-sensitive using fumes. Next, the copper would be exposed to bright lighting. Because the daguerreotype was so durable, it was the first kind of image that could be sold. Although daguerreotypes were quite good, they were hefty and stiff. The photographs may break, so you had to store them in a case. A tall post box on the street is called a pillar post box. People can deposit their outgoing mail at this site. The first pillar post boxes were erected in Guernsey in 1852. The early Victorian post boxes were green. London saw the installation of its first red post boxes in 1874, and it took more than 10 years to repaint the remaining boxes. Years before Queen Victoria took the throne in 1837, the Frenchman Barthelme Timonier invented at least one manually controlled mechanical device intended to do this in 1830. Britain produced mechanical sewing machines that could be controlled by hand. A few of these makers are William Thomas, 1845, Charles Todd Juking, 1852, and Edward Joseph Hughes, 1852. Hand-operated sewing machines were highly desirable in industries and at home as they became more widely available. There was also one for Queen Victoria's eldest daughter. The most successful hand-operated sewing machine was created and marketed by American Mr. Isaac Merritt Singer. His mass production techniques yielded practical and efficient technology, and they also invented the Hire Purchase Program, which allowed machines to be purchased on credit in readily payable installments. When Mr. Singer's Glasgow factory opened in 1867, he became the greatest sewing machine maker in the world. He then expanded into Britain. In 1889, he created the first electric sewing machine. The pneumatic tire, sometimes known as the aerial wheel, was invented in Scotland in 1845 by Robert William Thompson, but he didn't put them on his child's tricycle until 43 years later. In 1888, John Boyd Dunlop redesigned the pneumatic tire for use in cars and bicycles. The business is still producing rubber tires today.
The number of cholera deaths in the UK started to decline in 1858 when sewers were built. George Jennings invented the flushing toilet in 1851 for the Great Exhibition in London, which flushed waste into sewers. After Thomas Crapper enhanced the flushing mechanism, they gained popularity. Though he did not create the modern toilet, Thomas Crapper was the first to display his inventions in a store showroom. He also designed and patented a number of improvements to the toilet. His and other artists' works, such as those of Thomas Twyford, Edward Johns, and Henry Dalton, were increasingly popular among those who could buy them. The first electronic message was sent over the Atlantic on July 16, 1858, between Queen Victoria and American President James Buchanan thanks to the establishment of telecommunication connections through an underwater cable at Osborne in 1852. In the course of studying hearing loss, Alexander Graham Bell created the electric telephone in 1876. On March 10, 1876, Bell and Thomas Watson, his assistant, successfully transmitted speech for the first time. Mr. Bell asked. He said, Watson, come here, I need to see you, and Watson paid attention. A year later, Bell filed for a patent on the gadget under the Bell Telephone Company. It made it possible for individuals who were far apart from one another to communicate. People could now talk to relatives and family who lived hundreds of kilometers away because to this. The first subterranean railroad in history began service in London's Paddington and Farringdon neighborhoods in 1863. The underground grew swiftly as part of a plan for a subterranean inner circle linking London's main line stations. It started out as gaslit wooden carriages drawn by steam engines. In 1859, Etienne Lenoir, a French engineer, invented the first internal combustion engine. This gasoline engine could operate continuously and had an igniting system. The engine greatly impacted British industry by saving time and energy by replacing human and animal power. Shortly after, in 1876, German inventor Nicholas Otto produced the first four-stroke engine that ran on gasoline, diesel, and kerosene rather than coal. Carl Benz designed the world's first vehicle based on Otto's blueprint. Limelight represented a noteworthy technological breakthrough. Additionally, it was a huge improvement over earlier lighting techniques like oil lamps, candles, and whale oil. Limelight is frequently run on natural gas or coal gas. The gas is lit with a match or lighter, and the flame is then used to light the wick of the lamp or other lighting fixture. When Sir Goldsworthy Gurney brought this new technology to London in 1807, households all around Europe and North America saw a significant increase in evening brightness. These upgrades were only affordable at the time for the wealthy. The Penny Farthing was the name of the original bicycle. James Staley created the first bicycle in 1859, including a penny-sized front wheel and a little back wheel that resembled a smaller farthing. Riding it was difficult, especially without brakes. When James Kemp Staley created a bicycle in 1885 using two smaller wheels that were linked and operated by a chain, the design was made simpler. English chemist Humphrey Davy heated a wire and then produced light to show how electric current flows through it in 1802. 
Before American inventor Thomas Edison created the incandescent light bulb and the essential energy distribution system in the 1870s, he and others conducted years of experiments. The architecture of buildings, the length of the workday, transportation, and economic prospects were all impacted by light bulbs. The majority of individuals in the 1890s would have encountered electric lights for the first time in public places like train stations. They wouldn't replace their gas mantles, oil lamps, or candles in their homes with electric light bulbs until far into the 20th century. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in 1868, Christopher Latham Scholes, Carlos Glidden, and Samuel W. Soule created the first typewriter. That year, on June 23rd, the device was granted a patent. It consisted of a keyboard with some numbers and letters on it, but not all of the numbers. This technology made composing letters faster and easier by enabling individuals to type them rather than write them by hand. After Scholl's patent expired in 1883, the QWERTY keyboard layout became the industry standard for typing machines. While there were other versions of the vehicle, including one driven by steam, the first true motor car was created in 1885 by Benz & Co., which would eventually change its name to Mercedes-Benz. The company's founder, Carl Benz, developed the first motor wagon after receiving a patent for his first engine in 1879. The invention was patented in 1886, and this was constructed in 1885. After that, they started an automobile campaign, and by 1893, they had sold 25 Benz and Co. vehicles. Development continued during the Victorian era, and the automobile rose to prominence as one of the most widely used forms of transportation globally. In 1895, the Lumiere brothers presented Victorian audiences with the first motion movies as we know them today. Two French brothers named Auguste and Louis Lumiere created a portable motion picture camera with a projector and film processing equipment. We used to call it the cinematograph. In 1895, Lumiere and his brother screened 10 50-second films for a paying audience, becoming the first people to exhibit moving visuals captured by photography on a screen. While working with cathode ray tubes in 1897, German physicist Wilhelm Röntgen discovered that when he turned on the equipment, a screen covered with black cardboard would glow. He found that it was caused by electromagnetic energy that can pass through solid materials, known as X-rays. He tested the X-ray photo of Albert von Kohleiker's bones and wedding band, finding that the rays could pass through human tissue. Röntgen's discovery that X-rays might be used to detect diseases or injuries without the need for surgery transformed contemporary medicine. The use of electricity was one of the most significant and fascinating discoveries made throughout the 19th century, a period of great innovation and discovery. Even though electricity was discovered in the late 1700s, its practical applications weren't realized until much later by innovators. In addition to using electricity to run devices like motors and lighting, inventors also utilized it to produce heat, which led to more discoveries on the nature of heat. The procedure was no longer painful, but the operating rooms were dirty and bloody, and over half of the patients died from infection. 
Louis Pasteur, a 19th century scientist who believed that hidden germs caused sickness, served as inspiration for surgeon Joseph Lister. Lister started using carbolic acid to disinfect his tools and bandages, and he required that medical staff wash their hands after treating patients. He saw a decrease in post-operative mortality right away, and his concepts changed surgery when they were widely adopted. A prosperous British man named Sir Henry Cole wanted to wish everyone he knew a Merry Christmas in 1843. His buddy John Collot Horsley designed the first Christmas card and gave it to him. The card showed a normal family enjoying Christmas together and giving to a good cause. The procedure was no longer painful, but the operating rooms were dirty and bloody, and over half of the patients died from infection. Louis Pasteur, a 19th century scientist who believed that hidden germs caused sickness, served as inspiration for surgeon Joseph Lister. Lister started using carbolic acid to disinfect his tools and bandages, and he required that medical staff wash their hands after treating patients. He saw a decrease in post-operative mortality right away, and his concepts changed surgery when they were widely adopted. Quinine, which was first extracted from the cinchona tree's bark, fits between some cells' DNA strands to prevent malaria-affected cells from proliferating. Quinine tasted terrible, yet it effectively prevented malaria in British colonists living in Africa. Travelers consequently mixed gin and quinine to disguise the flavor, thus creating the gin and tonic that Schweppes began selling in 1870. In 1895, Henri Becquerel, a French physicist, by inadvertently discovered radioactivity when he stored unexposed photographic plates in a drawer with materials that released radiation. He could see how the radiation affected the pictures. Following Becquerel's discovery, a number of scientists were interested in the workings of this process and its implications for earthly life. The radioactive elements polonium and radium were also discovered by Marie and Pierre Curie. Through his work with pitch blend or uranium ore, Ernest Rutherford discovered that most radioactive elements had an atomic weight that corresponded to their activity level. When a mineral has many isotopes, it also has multiple nuclear weights. This phenomenon is referred to as isotopic abundance. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more educational content.